Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Behind the Group podcast. I am DJ Keel. And I am Basil Barrington. And we are back with the year in review 2023. This is everything we've watched and maybe some things we watched on our own. We're going to give you the best of everything here. Mm -hmm. So let's just get right into it, okay? Let's talk about the best animation film or TV series that we have watched. What do you have, Keo? I have Pluto for Ooh. my first animation. Mm -hmm. that, I yeah. think that was the best one I've seen mm -hmm. by far. Not even close. Yeah. There's like there's a wide gas chasm between all of everything else. Yeah, Pluto is, is Pluto for me too. I mean, Pluto was something. Um, I said this in a review when we reviewed Pluto. I was like, okay, people, yes, it's animation, right? But this is probably one of the most compelling, you know, TV shows I've seen in 2023. Mm. This joint was off the emotional. chain. Emotional, yes. yeah, emotional, just interesting, like all around the board. Visuals all around the board. Stunning. Everything. You know, the story was really interesting. It's, it had like film noir vibe to it. Yeah, the mystery thing going on, mm. and it was good. It's adult. It was good. Like yeah, it's really good. It's really good, man. This was our uh, best animation of 2023. We gave it to Pluto. Okay, mm -hmm. next category. Best TV series. What do you have here, man? Uh, I have Foundation for Excuse my me. pick for best mm -hmm. TV series. Okay. What did you pick? Mm -hmm. My choices were Foundation, Picard, mm -hmm. or Silo. Silo was really good, right? Uh, I'm all, also, all good choices. All good. Yeah, all good choices. I'm also going to give it to Foundation because that's that was just like a little new in terms of like TV series. Mm -hmm. You know, Picard, we've seen Picard before. You know, that world yeah. silo was pretty cool and pretty interesting. But Foundation, mm -hmm. man, is just, it's Foundation, dude. I mean, come on, you know? I mean, what are you going <laughs> to do, you know? You have Day, Dusk, all the people, um, you know, Demazel just show. kicking butt. It's a great show, just man. Is a great like just coming into the universe like you want to see more like I want to I want to learn about everything I want how'd you get here like that's that's the hallmarks of a good show when you care about everything every aspect of the show not just the characters that you like it, it, everything you want to see more yeah yeah this great show man okay best director who do you have here man so uh, my best director is David Fincher mm -hmm. and he directed the killer movie off of Netflix and uh, I. I really like that movie a lot. Like mm -hmm. it's visually stunning. It's, yeah. It is so good. It's such a good movie. I think I rewatched it like three times already. Yeah. And it's it's just it's a good movie. It's the concept is cool. The way he directed the you know the the angles and just like cause he 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 likes to put everything set up in a box like just straight up, and to just carry that over in an action movie like that is just great. David Fincher yeah. is a beast of a film director. Killer was pretty dope, man. You know. I'm going to mm. give it to uh, Terry Mateus. He mm. did Picard. He put Picard back together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. Because... Yeah, yeah. Messed right? Before. <laughs> right? Because, you know, season one, it was like, oh, you know. Yeah, and then yeah, season yeah. two, it was like, wait a minute. What is, like, the Borg queen doing here, right? Mm -hmm. He took three. From, he took basically all the complaints from two and one mm -hmm. and said, what are you, why are you doing this to Picard? And he took that he the band back together. <laughs> he got the band back together, dude, you know, and mm -hmm. he really just hit that out the park, man. But I, I was like really surprised that, you know, the, 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 the production quality of season three and they just ended, you know, they were like, it's no more. They could have easily yeah, yeah. took that and did a four season. They four could have and a done five. more more shows. Yeah, of side characters. Exactly. And forget yeah. Picard and them. Let them re retire. Yeah. More shows have <clears throat> done. There's a bunch of stuff you could have done. So yeah, yeah, that's a hallmark of a good show. Excellent job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, next category: best actor. Who do you have here? So for best actor, I have Michael Fassbender. Oh, for the, and he's from for the, the killer, killer movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he killed it. He did a great job. Of that. Like, pun <laughs> he pun intended. Killed he, he killed did. it. Uh, all around, this great job. Mm -hmm. Are you when you're watching certain movies, like he, there's a character that you've seen him do other stuff before, but like he he took this role over, and you get the impression that like yo he could really do this. Mm -hmm. I love watching movies like that where I'm like this actor could really do this. Like yeah. you, you know, John Wick is a perfect example of that with Keanu. Keanu's picking up a gun. You're like, yeah, I can see that. I can totally mm -hmm. see that. And F Fast Bender is the same thing. He he, he just took over the role. Is yeah, I'll say that. I enjoyed it. I think it was one of the best uh, acting roles in the year. 
in my opinion, in my opinion. Well, yeah. Who did you have for your best actor? Um, I'm giving it to Lee Pace. That is Day of Foundation. Mm-hmm. He is, come on. I mean, I was reading his regimen, you know. I'm um, mm-hmm. like what he was doing during the pandemic, right? And he just started mm-hmm. doing yoga, right? And then next thing you know, he was doing yoga for like 15 hours a day. That's why when you look at his body, it's all ripped up like yeah, that, right? Like, his chisel like. Yo, and this guy is like 6'4", <laughs> right? And I'm just like, mm-hmm. I mean, everything, his delivery, he he basically lived the character. He, he went to sleep mm-hmm. as the character. You know, they, he yeah, yeah, really yeah. killed him. My, my choices were Patrick Stewart and Lee Pace, and I was like, Lee Pace, I'm going to give it to mm-hmm. Lee Pace because he kind of killed it, man, you know. That's fair. That's totally yeah. fair. <clears throat> um, best actress. Who do you have here, man, for this category? I have Rebecca Ferguson from Ooh. Silo. And, uh, yeah, I, she did a phenomenal job, man. <laughs> it was a phenomenal job. Really? Okay. i would say no more. That's mm-hmm. it. <laughs> I'll say Dude. no more. Watch the show. Yeah, Silo was dope. Dude, you know what? That's Rebecca uh, Ferguson is my pick as well, right? She, mm. like, this show, man, is um, it's not even a sleeper. Right. It's um, Mm -hmm. it's just something you have to watch. I mean, like, you know, when you have a series, generally you don't really get involved until like the third or fourth episode. Dude, they gave it to us up front. The first episode. Right. Yeah. It's right off the bat. Yeah. This is a phenomenal show, man. You know, and uh, I think that she really killed it, you know, as a best Mm -hmm. uh, best actress. So. Rebecca Ferguson is, uh, you know, we picked her for best actress. Okay, best cinematography. Who do you have here? Um, uh, I have you know, the killer. We have a lot of stuff. The killer, yeah. really? The killer, yeah. <laughs> cinematography is phenomenal in that movie. Right. Uh huh. <clears throat> like the dark, gloomy feel. Like just yeah. everything is great about that. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yeah. So yeah, I I put that down for that. What, what, do, you, what do you have for the cinematography? Okay, let me give you my choices really quickly. I have Picard, Foundation, and Loki. You know, Loki mm-hmm. always, Loki tends to get that right, even though it wasn't as great as the last season, mm-hmm. but they sort of got that right. I'm giving it yeah. to Foundation because Foundation That's was it. just like, I don't know, man, everything just came together for Foundation. How many times have you watched a movie or a TV mm-hmm. series where just everything is just right, everything is in the right place, no it Easter feels eggs, nothing. It futuristic, like it yes. feels like you're there. You know, no weird music. Right? You know, mm-hmm. nothing like that, you know. So I gave it to Foundation. Okay. Yeah. Best production set design. Who do you have here? So with this one, I'm going with the new movie, Rebel Moon. Mm. And visually, the movie's stunning. And just a, you can tell everything's where it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It, it looks good. It feels good. So that's, that's my best production. Yeah. Spaceships. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. Yeah. Amazing because it's a brand new universe from scratch. So that's my that's my pick. Yeah. I had some choices here, but then after I saw Rebel Moon, I was like, I'm I'm giving it to Rebel Moon as well because I was like, mm-hmm. my choices were Loki, um, Silo, Picard, and mm-hmm. Foundation. And I was like, and then once we watched Rebel Moon, I was like, wow, man, this this looks this it, looks, it looks good. good man. <laughs> this looks good. good. Yo, it's just like it's no <laughs> it's no denying how this show looks. I mean, that's why I'm mm-hmm. so excited about it, even though I didn't like it. I'm excited mm-hmm. about it because it looks good. And, you know, again, Zack Snyder is just going to give it to you. He's not playing around with stuff like this, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. So, pretty cool. Okay, next category. Best Supporting Actor. Who do you have here? So, for this, I have Ed Screen. I know you don't like it, his version of a bad guy in the movie, but uh, I, I thought he did a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm excited to see more from this guy. And Which movie going. are you speaking about? I'm talking about Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's, um, yeah, um, you know, for a bad guy to get killed and constantly come back, that's going to get boring for me. You know, I'm just like, well, wow. We, they, we have to see more. They we just don't know blew more him about up, you know? <laughs> like, I mean, they shot we like a missile yet. into him. He blew up. He's coming back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're uh, <laughs> we're going to see. We're going to figure out what's going We're going to see, man. Um, I had two choices here. I had Jonathan Franks and I had uh, Todd mm-hmm. Staswick. Todd Staswick is uh, Captain... Uh, Liam Shaw of um, yeah, he was great. Picard. Was he was pretty, pretty dope, right? I'm gonna give it to Jonathan Franks. He did triple duty here. He played like 
mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, number he was, you know, number one. He also directed. He directed a, you can see, well, he, yeah, he directed he, a couple shows too. Directed a couple episodes. He directed a lot of uh, shows like the last season. He's just really mm-hmm. cool, man. You know, I mean, I, I just like how he just evolved as an actor and just got into this whole directing thing. So, um, yeah, yeah. Best supporting actor, I gave it to Jonathan Franks. Okay, best supporting actress. Who do you have here, man? Come so on, give it I, to I us. I can't pronounce this chick's name. Who? It's Gold Schiff Farah, Farah, Ryan, I can't remember her name. From the uh, exchange with Thor. Mm-hmm. Um, that, is, that is the good movie. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't see that I, movie. I, mm-hmm. No, we watched it together. We watched it. Uh, we reviewed it. Which one? The The movie with Thor. Uh, Chris Hemsworth. Oh, um, um, the exchange, uh, extraction two. Extraction, yes. Uh, yes, okay, extraction, extraction two. two. Okay, yes, yeah. yes. Didn't she play? Yeah, she played in. Um, she played in. Um, um she's extinction. In, um, the, she's in extinction, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Apple TV thing. Yeah, extinction. Too, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. She's pretty yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. She's good. I can't yeah. pronounce her name. Gold, I said Gold Shift or something. I know I can't pronounce her name. Something like She's that. She's great. Man. I loved I loved her in the thing. Awesome. Yeah, Demizel. So I'm giving it to Demizel basically, you know, because she just kind of killed it. She doesn't play around. I mean, you could have easily given her like I could have easily given her like the best actress as well, you know. Mm-hmm. But she um, but yeah, she she has a nice little supporting role here with Foundation. So I gave it to her. Pretty cool, man. You okay. know, she sort of rocks it, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what she gets into in um, season three. So, yeah. best visual effects. Who do you have here, man? So I have Avatar, Way of the Water. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't seen it yet, if you just like the technical aspect of it, mm-hmm. James Cameron put his foot in this movie, <laughs> and it, it's some of the best visual effects you will ever see on screen. And it's not even close. There's a wide chasm. Because when you're watching the movie, Everything on the screen is digital. Everything. But it's so seamless between the live action people and the avatars and the universe they're in. It is so seamless that you kind of forget that none of this is real. And that's that's a testament to like how good this is. Because there's some scenes where, you know, the live person is acting with the avatar and they're fighting and doing all this craziness, jumping off of buildings, whatever. You cannot tell the difference. Wow. It's some of the mm-hmm. best special effects mm-hmm. by bar none. I, I don't even think it's close between this and any other movie. I guess mm-hmm. it's not close. Yeah, I didn't see that movie. Um, it's on my watch list. I gotta get. I gotta, you gotta put, watch it. I gotta you put, put some fi- time into. I gotta it, put though. five hours aside to watch that movie <laughs> because I'm gonna keep stopping it, doing something, stopping it, doing something. So we will see. Um, I'm gonna give mm-hmm. it to um, my choices were Picard and Foundation. Um, Picard, mm-hmm. you know, you've seen that world before. So um, I'm going to give it to Foundation because uh, there were just some really dope scenes. There was some, the thing about Foundation, right, is, you know, we didn't have the splash, right? But yeah, yeah, just the, kind of just go into the universe. And that's right, it. but the way they put it together, you know, like even even some of the smaller things, just visually <laughs> it sort of connected with me. So I gave it to uh, Foundation. So mm-hmm. next category, best documentary. What do you have here? Uh, I watched The uh, Wizard of AI, and mm-hmm. I, I was kind of a documentary, mm-hmm. kind of like a warning of the future, I guess. It's like 20-something yeah. minutes long. Mid-journey that, That's my mm-hmm. pick. Yeah. I I was so fascinated watching this thing, and the storytelling that was put together is so good. I kind of wish it was longer, but that that's my pick for yeah. a documentary. That was like a short film documentary, yeah. Let me give you my three yeah. choices here. I had um, the George Michael uh, documentary. I had Millie mm. Vanilli, which was sicko. The Millie Vanilli documentary yeah. was sicko. And I had The Wizard of AI. Um, mm. I'm going to give it to The Wizard of AI as well because that was, um, it was, we know this stuff, right? We are in tech. This Mid Journey V4 is kind of, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, hey, like hey. this, this Mid Journey <laughs> is cool, is- however, you know? Mm. So um, I gave it to the Wizard of AI. That's listen. This is a short film documentary for twenty minutes. It's twenty minutes. You can watch it on Vivo. It's available now on Vivo. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, you know. So um, I really enjoyed it too. Okay, next mm-hmm. category: best costume design. What do you have here? So I went with Rebel Moon for this, mm-hmm. and 
I yeah, it's it's, it's stunning. The characters, the the costumes they're wearing, it's all unique. Like you haven't seen this in another movie somewhere, and it's just you, I don't know. Like that world building is so good that you kind of lose track of what what it is that you're Excuse watching. Me. Like you're just shocked. Like it's it's really good. Characters are basically when somebody comes on the screen, you're like, "Who's that guy? Where's this guy from? I want to know more!" Like mm-hmm. instantly. So that's that's why I picked that. Yeah, that was um, yeah, you know um, <clears throat> I buy I have a lot of sweaters and jackets that are like military inspired. I love mm-hmm. like just military uniforms and the military mm-hmm. uniforms that they were wearing was sicko, dude. It's almost like the. The military hats they were wearing in um, <laughs> Andor. I was like, oh, that's kind of sick right there, you know? I'm going to give it to, believe it or not, Ahsoka. I know. Okay. I know. Okay. Ahsoka sucked. <laughs> 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 but um, like we said, with Ahsoka, if you take Ahsoka and Sabim away, it's actually not bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's pretty decent. It's, it's so right. sad it's that we're decent. saying that. It's just like we're taking the main character away from her own shows to make it better. That's a mess, man. That's it's a, a mess. mess, man. You know, come on. So I, I gave it to Ahsoka. <laughs> they got um her makeup down crazy. I mean, the makeup mm-hmm. was sick, right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm giving it to Ahsoka. Okay, here we go. W- uh, worst movie or TV series? What do you have here? So uh, This is a tie. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't pick one, so this is a tie. Mm-hmm. I have Ahsoka as the worst TV series, mm-hmm. and Indiana Jones as the worst movie. So this is going to Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. They need to get their act together. Right. <laughs> they they took it. They took the whole pie by themselves. Yeah. Lucasfilm needs help. Okay. They are in trouble. <laughs> Tremendous. Wow. Trouble. Okay. <laughs> so I definitely am giving the worst TV series to Ahsoka all day. Mm-hmm. I mean, stop it. Um, and the worst <laughs> movie I'm giving to Ghosted from Apple TV. This is probably the bad. worst thing that Apple That's has created, bad. ghosted. It was, like, mm-hmm. so ridiculous. You have spies running around like they have never run before. It's just like, hey, <laughs> do you know how to run? You know, it's just like, well, no, that, 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 was, that was weak. It was just like, no, you, you can't do the stuff The worst like part that, about TV. it is that I like all the people in the movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like, all of the actors, I like that. I think they're all great. Right. Everybody's decent. <laughs> the movie just sucks. Awful movie. Awful movie. You know, um, let's get into some of the best and worst streaming apps. Okay, best Mm -hmm. streaming app. What do you have here? So, as far as content, I think it's lacking, but you know, for Mm -hmm. visuals, is uh, Apple TV. I I really like the app, I think the app is great Mm -hmm. and it it works great on all my new Apple stuff. So, that's that's awesome for me. But, like, I I like the I like the the setup, and I think it's really good and it's unique. Yeah, because everybody else is basically copying Netflix. Like you're yeah. being real here. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they went they went in a different way, but like it's it's a nice app. I like it. You know, last year you said Netflix, and then shortly thereafter you started buying Apple products, and now <laughs> now you're in the ecosystem, right? I am in the ecosystem, and now you st- you're starting to see how all this stuff works, right? My best streaming mm-hmm. app is Apple TV. Here's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. You want the super experience? Get the Apple TV device. That's the super experience. Mm-hmm. I have two Apple TV devices, you know, yeah. and they just update it like the OS. So, and I'm just like, wow, it's like crazy here, right? Mm-hmm. Apple TV, I mean, we're not talking about content, you know? We're talking about like an app. Yeah, you yeah. Know, we got to be clear here. It's not right. content. They, we're not talking about content, yet. you know, just the intelligence they, they of, the right, just the intelligence of the Apple TV app. Mm-hmm. And again, just the app as an app standalone and also just the Apple TV device, you know, mm-hmm. it's great. You know, it's, it's it's getting up there. So, okay, worst streaming app. Tell me who it is. Amazon, still. Amazon, okay. <laughs> Amazon. So I'm going to say it's Amazon, too. This is two years in a row for us. I'm going to take a quote from the great DJ Keel, who said, <laughs> Jeff Bezos forgot he had... Amazon Prime Video because that's what it feels like. It feels like (laughs) Amazon forgot they had Prime Video. What Mm. are you doing, Amazon? What I, you know, (laughs) what I, what's really interesting to me about Amazon Prime Video is one, it's on AWS. Two, Mm -hmm. Amazon has engineers, programmers, they have everything. They have everything they need to fix this. I don't understand it. 
this is the top five company in America, you know, in the world, maybe, you know, it's just yes. like, what's going on? I don't There's know what's going on with this. of it that's great. Like the IMD connection to it. So like, you yeah, pause the scene that's dope. and it tells you what it actors, that's Music, great. That's tell you what dope. song is mm-hmm. playing. All that stuff is, I love that. Everything else is terrible. And it's yo, so bad. Amazon went out and acquired IMDB to put this functionality inside of Amazon Prime Video. It seemed like when the MGM, you know, um, merger or acquisition didn't go all the way through, it got worse. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think they're just like still sort of like licking their wounds from that, you know. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but this is the like, worst app ever. Uncertain. Yeah. They are uncertain what to do. Yeah. 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 Let's get into some of our personal best. These are things and shows that we watched on our own. So let's go mm-hmm. with your personal best movie you watched this year. The most enjoyment I got out of a movie was John Wick 4. Mm-hmm. And it, it was great. Like, <laughs> I was just cheesing up and enjoying the action. It's a good movie. So, you know, it finishes the series off and John Wick is dead now, so there's no more. Hopefully. We'll mm-hmm. see. But, yeah, it, it was a great movie. It, it's a good uh, end to uh, the series. And yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, um, you know, 2023, we didn't have a lot of content. First of all, let's just put that out there. 2023, we had the writer strike. We had the actor strike. We didn't have a lot of content, right? So mm-hmm. I watched a movie on Amazon called uh, 2036 Origin Unknown. It's with Katie Sackoff. You know, I, I love mm-hmm. Katie Sackoff. And, you know, it, it it didn't do great in terms of reviews, you know, but I thought it was an mm-hmm. interesting sci-fi movie. It wasn't that long. And, you know, Katie's going to give you Katie, right? She's going to give you Katie sci-fi. So it was an interesting, you know, movie to watch online, you know, given Mm. the fact that nothing was really available because of the strike, (laughs) (laughs) you know? It hurt. We hurt this year. It hurt, right, exactly. Because the strike started so early in the year, it just wrecked everything. It wrecked everything, man, for real. What do you think about your best TV series that you watched on your own? So my best TV series is Reacher. Mm-hmm. I, I love that show. I think that show is great. And there, it, it came back for season two this year. Like it just started. So we're like four episodes in. But mm-hmm. it's so good. It's such a good show. Okay. So that's may, that's my best TV series. I may have to bubble up on that. I'm going to give it to this animated series that I saw on Netflix. This joint is off the chain. It's called Blue-Eyed Samurai. To be honest with you, if I didn't watch Pluto, Blue-Eyed Samurai would be right up there. Yeah, it's right up one. there. You know? Mm-hmm. This joint is off the chain, dude. It's like, it's about like the white man going to Japan and infiltrating, you know, the bloodline. And, you know, someone's trying to, this, this I guess this mixed, China, this mixed uh, Japanese woman who's mixed, you know, with mm-hmm. Japanese and white, trying to kill these like white people who, you know, just is destroying her country, you know. And it's, um, again, animated. Yeah, yeah. You know, she has blue eyes with, you know, hence the name Blue Eyes Samurai. Um, really cool, really thoughtful. Um, it's the ending was really, really, really dumb, you know, super mm-hmm. dumb. All right. We're not going to talk about that yet. Yeah. Super dumb. But we might have to review it later on. Yeah. But like, yeah, we're... super dumb. That's I'm, I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting upset right now just based on, you know, me yeah, talking yeah. about the ending. But this anime series is up there with. Um, Pluto. Pluto blows everything out the way, but it's it's a it's a watch here. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Give me your best sleeper of 2023. So this is a movie I watched in the fall, no, in the summer. Mm -hmm. It's called The Creator, and it's an AI movie about Mm -hmm. robots. And the the fact that they did it on such a low budget and use regular cameras that you can just buy in the convenience store. You can buy these cameras from Best Buy. Mm-hmm. That's the cameras they use for this this movie, and it looks epic, and it's a good story. Like visually, it's stunning, and it's it's phenomenal how they shot this thing together. It's this my sleeper movie, just to, from the technical aspect alone. Like story is good, action's great, but the technical aspect alone, they filmed a blo- a blockbuster, high high expensive movie on a, a camera that you buy from Best Buy, wow. with regular lenses. And everything and it looks so good like it once you realize how they did it like it just it just your head just explodes like you just can't figure it out like it's just, it's so insane mm-hmm. even though you know what they're doing it just blows your mind like visually is crazy 
Yeah. And it's by Gareth Edwards. He did um he, he did a Star Wars movie. He did some mm-hmm. other stuff. Oh, he did the Monsters movie wow. too. And okay. he's he's great. Mm-hmm. He's great. Okay, I'm gonna give you my best sleeper. So this is uh <laughs> this is something I watched uh the first season last wow. year and then the second season is now out. It is called The Gilded Age. It's a mm-hmm. period drama on Max. Man, it is it's so dope. Mm-hmm. Um, the the intrigue of it, you know, this is like, the, you know, this is during like the robber baron, you know, in the gilded age mm-hmm. of like, you know, just money and everything, you know, the Rockefellers and, you know, all that sort of stuff, right? And just power and, um, you know, um, positioning, you know, your station in society. Um, yeah, again, yeah. it's a period drama, so the costumes are dope. And then they also show, you know, sort of like, the richness of black people who lived in Brooklyn and had like all this money and everything too during the Gilded Age. Great period mm-hmm. drama joint. Um, it's not sci-fi. Again, it's it's a period drama, but this is great. This is the second season. This is mm-hmm. a great show. Sleeper. Okay. Okay. We are to the last here. Our last category is the best of 2023. Keo, this can be a movie or a TV mm-hmm. series. What is the best thing you've seen, you've watched in 2023? So we were, we were talking about this offline, and mm-hmm. my pick is Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a technical achievement that Christopher Nolan got people to watch a person, a scientist, write on a chalkboard for three hours and tell his life story. And people sat down for three hours and watched it. And yeah. it's intriguing. It's mm-hmm. like, I, I can't stress this enough. I forgot the time. Once the thing started, I was like, okay, what's this about? And it's because I know the story. I mean, everybody knows like the Manhattan Project and, you know, like all this stuff that happened in World War II, the end of war, Japan. Like everybody knows the actual story. But the way this guy put this together on IMAX is just, it's insane. I can't put this enough. So as far as the technical aspect, the visuals, everything, it looks stunning. The cast is amazing. And I'm telling you, you're going to sit down for three hours and watch this guy ride on the chalkboard, and you're like, this is great. That's that. That's the outcome of this. This is how good a director Christopher Nolan is. So that's, that's my movie, Best Picture. Yeah. I'm going to give it to uh, Pluto. Pluto mm. is it's phenomenal. And again, it's an animated series, but it's adult. And what we say, when we say it's adult, we're not talking about nudity and stuff like that. You know, we're just yeah, talking yeah. about adult stories. And yeah, exactly. And yeah. This joint is crazy. It's also a little scary as well, because we know this yeah. is coming. We know it's coming. You know, it's already here, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, people just have to release yeah. it. Governments just have to release it. Right. We know it's mm-hmm. here. Right. The Japanese already knew this. The Japanese were talking about this like in the 50s and 60s. They already knew this stuff. Right. I mean, they've been um, working on this for decades. man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? For real. So Pluto, man, is just um, it's a phenomenal animated series on Netflix. And it's the mm-hmm. best thing I've seen in 2023. All right. So we are done with our best of for 2023, man. We have a lot more coming up now that the strike is over. We know that there's going to be a lot more content coming up. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, probably um, gonna be able to watch Dune, so there's that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and a lot of other stuff that was like put on the back burner because of the, you know, the writer mm-hmm. strike and everything else. You know, um, so this is gonna be the last show of 2023. We are gonna take a break for a few weeks, and we will come back yes. and get to it. Well, there you have it. Thanks for checking out another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. I am DJ Keo. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And until next time, peace. All right.